use of non-nutritive sweetener. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And uh, oh, I'll just introduce you. I am from Mumbai. I work in Mumbai Hospital. So we'll start with uh, non-nutritive sweeteners. WHO says what? So this is the agenda for today. So artificial sweeteners or non-nutritive sweeteners do not raise sugar levels. WHO has recommended total amount of added sugars to be kept less than 10% of total caloric intake, which in simple terms amounts to around 6 to 12 uh, uh, tablespoons, uh, teaspoons. And we'll review the literature to ascertain whether there is insufficient data to offer recommendation for use of NNS. So through the ages, we know the sweet taste has remained one of humanity's most cherished flavors. It has been common knowledge that consuming extra sugar can lead to detrimental health consequences and non-nutritive sweeteners have garnered a significant position among the most sought after alternatives to sugars. And uh, before 1950s, interestingly, they were used for cost reasons because they were less expensive than sugar. Low calorie sweeteners have been designated as NNS non-nutritional by AHA since they do not provide any nutritional advantage such as of vitamins and minerals. Aspartame, A-sulfame K, Neotame, Saccharine and Sucralose are US FDA approved. And recently some concerns regarding safety and long term effects of certain uh, sweeteners have arisen, thereby leading the WHO last year in May to advise restricting the consumption of non-sugar uh, sweeteners in adults without diabetes. This is important to note the guidelines and whatever uh, we say here, uh, what WHO raised the concerns was for individuals without diabetes. So going through the history, uh, discovery in 1931, steroid glycosides, 1965, aspartame, sucralose, neotame, and first approved was sucralose in 1976, followed by aspartame, neotame, and steroid glycosides approved in 2009. So saccharine, aspartame, and sucralose were discovered accidentally. So classifying naturally occurring include glycosides and non-glycosides, whereas synthetic, synthetical or uh, artificial occurring, neotame, aspartame, and some of the others. So thing to note here is stevia is a naturally occurring uh, substitute. Key characteristics. Look at the amount of uh, uh, time, number of times sweet these are. So a sulfame K is around 200 times sweeter than sucrose. Same for aspartame. Sucralose is 600 times sweeter. Stevia glycosides are 200 to 300 times. And neotame, which is not available in our country, is around 7,000 to 13,000 times sweeter. So aspartame is the first generation. Sucralose, second generation. Stevia glycosides are the third generation, approved in 2009 by uh, AECFA and it's approved for use in 49 countries. And Neotame is also third generation. So now some special considerations. In children, it was, uh, it has shown no impact on childhood malignancies because there are concerns about malignancies, but uh, these have shown no impact on childhood malignancies. In pregnancy and lactation, two have been, two are considered to be safe. One is stevia and the other one is sucralose. And the others, aspartame can uh, cause phenylketonuria, so it has to be avoided. And saccharine can cause placenta, it has to be avoided as well. Gut microbiota, animal models have shown evidence that uh, non-nutritive sweeteners change the gut microbiome and sucralose allegedly affected the uh, intestinal flora and may result in liver inflammation in mice and uh, also saccharine and aspartame were linked to changes in the gut flora and gut intolerance but a recent randomized control trial in humans refuted this and well done studies have provided no evidence of non-nutritive sweeteners causing side effects brought on by changes in the gut microbiome. Now talking about body weight. Several epidemiological studies using rat models and human observation studies concluded that these sweeteners contribute to weight gain by increasing appetite, hunger, sweet cravings and while lowering satiety. But when randomized control trials were looked into, non-nutritive sweeteners help with weight management by encouraging weight loss and managing, uh, maintaining by decreasing the consumption of sugar containing foods, hence reducing the net calorie intake. So optimizing for more conclusive outcomes, it requires more randomized control trials and uh, bigger studies with higher degrees of now talking about diabetes, ADA in 2019 consensus report mentioned that the use of non-nutritive sweeteners has the potential to reduce overall calorie and carbohydrate intake if substituted for caloric sweeteners and without compensation by intake of additional calories from other food sources and also said that may help reduce increase in glucose levels associated with increased intake of sugar sweetened beverages in people with diabetes. Dental health, widely recognized that frequent ingestion of free sugars is linked to emergence of dental caries and limiting free sugars to less than 10% of uh, daily energy lowers uh, the risk of dental caries throughout a person's life. 
and cardiovascular disease mortality it has been shown in some studies to uh, increase risk of stroke coronary heart disease and all cause mortality and the total amount of artificial sweeteners consumed was linked to an elevated cardiovascular risk but when it is consumed within the recommended allowance it does not cause any uh, such side effects even for malignancy cyclamate was uh, shown in 1970s that it can cause cancer in laboratory animals but it was uh, who concluded it is not a carcinogen and allowed to reintroduce into the food supply even saccharin was shown to have risk of bladder cancer but later on uh, epidemiological investigations did not confirm that who advises not to use non sugar sweeteners for weight control in newly released guidelines and what is the guideline summary so uh, the recommendation is based on a finding of systematic review of the available evidence which suggests that use of nss does not confer any long term benefit in reducing body fat of uh, adults or children and Results of the review also suggest there may be potential undesirable effects from long-term use of NSS, such as increased risk of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and mortality in adults. Replacing free sugars with uh, non-nutritive sweeteners does not help in weight control in long term, and people need to consider other ways to reduce free sugar intake, such as consuming foods uh, with naturally occurring sugars like fruit, unsweetened foods, and beverages. And these are not essential dietary factors and have no nutritive value. people should reduce the sweetness of the diet altogether this is important starting early in life even earlier it was discussed somebody asked about their kids and children so we have to start early in life uh, talk about food label reading uh, know the recommended dietary allowances that can make a big change this recommendation applies to all people except individuals with pre existing diabetes as i mentioned earlier and common sweeteners include a sulfame k aspartame advantame cyclamate neotem saccharin sucralose stevia and stevia derivatives this recommendation does not apply to personal care and hygiene products containing uh, uh, the sweeteners such as toothpaste skin creams medications or to low calorie sugars or sugar polyols which are sugars or sugar derivatives containing calories and therefore they are not considered uh, non sugar sweeteners why is the who interested in these non sugar sweeteners so the increasing use of non sugar sweeteners particularly in soft drinks has stimulated interest in scientific uh, evidence of their effects on the health and wide stem uh, widespread use may stem from variety of factors such as personal preference the perceived health benefits promotion by manufacturers or in response to recent policies designed to reduce sugar intake what is the new guideline based on so who conducted a systematic review and meta analysis to comprehensively review the available evidence and the review included 280 studies of different designs primary rcts of 50 studies prospective cohort studies 97 and case control studies and rcts have shown higher intake of non sugar sweeteners resulted in increased reduced calories sugars intake and uh, lower body weight and uh, who concluded that uh, any potential uh, short term benefits of using uh, non sugar sweeteners for weight control as shown in trials were outweighed by the potential long term risk of obesity and chronic diseases as suggested in cohort and case control studies so now if non sugar sweeteners don't contain calories how can they lead to weight gain it is possible that using these sweeteners may not lead to reduction in calories that we might expect which may be due to a variety of factors because sometimes you know even uh, if i take tea or coffee without sugar we might end up picking up two biscuits as happening as happening outside you know, so that can be one reason because patients end up uh, eating something else although non sugar sweeteners taste sweet like sugar the body doesn't get the energy or the calories in it expects after tasting sweetness in which may leave us unsatisfied or feeling hungry and continued use of non sugar sweeteners could make us less sensitive to sweetness leading us to choose sweeter foods which are often high in calories and other research suggest non sugar sweeteners may change the balance of the bacteria in our gut which plays a role in increased insulin resistance obesity and metabolic health how strong is the evidence so it's worth noting whatever who said overall quality of evidence for the review conducted by who was graded as of low certainty by who themselves and only four of the trials lasted more than a year most of the randomized control trials were 3 to 4 months so that was not significant and most of them did not look at long term weight control so the key limitation of the cohort studies is that people who already have gained weight may have taken action to cut their calories by switching from sugars to non sugar sweeteners this means the studies may find higher non sugar sweeteners intake is related to ill health you know already people who are obese or who are uh, overweight who had uh, uh, these issues they were switching to non sugar because it was all prospective uh, retrospective data and uh, when actually it was because people carried excess weight in the first place should we cut out non sugar sweeteners who guideline is not intended for individuals it is intent intended to inform policy decisions rather than provide a personal target for individuals the guideline does not give a maximum amount of non sugar sweeteners to limit intake to although if you are a frequent or a daily or a high consumer you may have a reason to consider reducing your intake compared to the occasional consumer 
India, frankly, we are not using these sweeteners a lot. Basically, in India, it's used only in tea, coffee, and some of the beverages compared to the Western counterparts where it is used uh, in, in a much higher quantity in even other foods and desserts. So these sweeteners, you know, the various guidelines like AHA, even the Association of UK Dietitians and EPSA, most of them uh, have mentioned that they facilitate reduction in added sugar intake, they help in uh, management of weight, and reduce postprandial glycemic excursions as well. <laughs> Replacing free sugars with, uh, this is what the WHO Director uh, for Nutrition Food Safety said, Replacing free sugars with non-nutritive uh, sweeteners does not help with weight control in the long term. People need to consider other ways to reduce free sugar intake like consuming food with naturally occurring sugars like fruit or unsweetened food and beverages and these are not essential dietary factors and have no nutritive value. Now this is an important slide here. Guidelines for use of non-nutritive sweeteners in India. We have to avoid all non-nutritive sweeteners in pregnancy. Preferably avoid in children even though data suggests this does not link with malignancy or obesity. Aspartame should be avoided in, uh, uh, not to be, not be added in hot beverages. Aspartame should not be given to those with phenylketonuria. Do not use, uh, use these sweeteners to prepare desserts and sweet dishes where large quantities may be required for optimizing taste because the quantity is important. Remember just because sugar is removed and replaced with a non nutritive sweetener, a dessert which can be carbohydrate does not become uh, uh, healthy because it already has the high calories and the fat content. Do not use these sweeteners as part of weight reduction program as their efficacy is not established. Use of these sweeteners, particularly stevia or sucralose in small quantities along with tea and coffee appears to be safe. And do not exceed the acceptable daily allowance of sweeteners and more Indian data is required. So existing WHO recommendations to limit intakes of free sugars, those added to foods and drinks and naturally present in honey, syrup and fruit juice are still apply. UK guidelines recommend that less than 5% of total daily, cal uh, daily calories should come from free sugars. WHO says 10%, so which is around 6 to 12 teaspoons of sugars, which is a big number. So even if someone who does not have diabetes consumes these 2, 3, 4 spoons of sugars, it should not harm them. And because non-sugar sweeteners do not appear to be an ideal replacement for sugars, you may want to consider other ways of reducing your sugar intake. Drinking water instead of sugary uh, drinks is a great choice, but unsweetened tea, coffee and low-fat milks are good options too. You could try infusing water with fresh fruit or uh, even fruit juice if you need a hint of sweetness. But try to limit fruit juice to 150 ml per day. They contain free sugars too. Consider choosing lower sugar options for breakfast cereals, porridge, yogurts and top them with uh, chopped fruits for sweetness. This is a very good uh, habit which we recommend to our patients using fruits for sweetness. And reading the nutrition label which we all have uh, insisted for sugar content and ingredient list on food products is a great place to start when considering making changes to your diet. Thank you.